Hello, Francisco. Hello, Marlon. Good evening. Good evening. Hello, good evening. Uh, hi. How's it going? Everything's okay, okay teacher. Awesome. Okay. Sounds Great. <laughs> you should be sad because today is your last class, right, teacher? What? I'm sorry? Repeat. You should be sad because today is your last class, right? I'm sad. Can you see my eyes? I have been crying the whole day. <laughs> yeah, you look like that. No, uh, don't worry. I mean, most likely we're going to start very soon again. So I don't know if you will be with me. I don't know yet. Uh, that's upon administration, not our end. No, but that's okay. Don't worry. Do you know uh, when do we start the next module? I have my reserves about it. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, it's okay, but I have uh, some sort of idea of when we're starting and hopefully soon. But the question today is, do you have any questions? <laughs> any no, questions? Really no, teacher. Just practice the structure that you give in the past class because that's the secret practice, right? Mm -hmm. Practicing the grammar and repeating, repeating, repeating as much as you can. But no, seriously, um, regarding the whole content of this module, let me just invite the others. Okay, uh, regarding every topic, covered in this module that's my question if you have any questions any doubts still no teacher maybe just the um, the topic about a comparison uh, using such as it's a new topic for me so i like it a lot because okay. i learn a new way to compare things to compare things well, okay. Count and not count, such as where was it? It was it in section three. I do remember what section was. Yeah, compar comparisons with adjectives and nouns. I think that was it. Yeah, something like that. Then we had evaluations with adjectives and nouns too. Yeah. Enough to just as many just as much remember yeah sure comparatives okay let me retrieve that really quick like my cell phone is is as uh, new as your cell phone something like that it was right i think you're going the other way hold on So you look, I need to practice it. <laughs> yeah, there it is. Okay, I got it. Just let me do what I was doing in the previous class. I'll just show you what it was so we can put it into practice. Just cover that part. Oh yeah, I can do it. Okay, good, better. So let's see. I think my friend, you're talking about this, but hold on, I didn't share the audio and the, there we go. Okay, so you're talking about this part, evaluations and comparisons. Yes, right. just okay. that. Try to make this bigger. I cannot change it. Okay, good. Talking about evaluations and with nouns or with adjectives, there were four different ways of doing this. So if you're doing evaluations with adjectives and I want you to understand something, um, 
every grammar structure, Marlon, what you have to do is just identify the structure of the sentence and go replacing. Okay. For example, let's do it together, okay? Francisco? Mm -hmm. So, yes. the first uh, sentence says, apartments, I'm gonna write it, aren't big enough for families. Okay, so now you have one sentence and you can do this by watching a movie. Simple as that. You're watching the movie and then the, someone says, apartments aren't big enough for families. Okay, what is apartments? In this... In grammar? Subject of this sentence? Is the subject of the sentence. Then what is aren't? To be with not. Okay. Big? Big is an adjective. Exactly. Exactly. Then you have an adjective and then what is enough? It's the complement. Enough. enough for families? Uh, okay, enough. No, 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 no. It's like um, adverb. No, what's the name of this? I don't, I don't remember. It's like more, much, um, enough. It's a quantifier. Quantifier, right. Yeah. It's a quantifier. And then for families will be the complement. This exercise, my friend, is what you should be doing at this point. Now that you are close to advanced, you should start uh, getting the, the structure in your mind. You know, every time someone says something, Ahora te pregunto, ¿cómo identificas qué tiempo gramatical se está ocupando acá? Cuando haces este ejercicio de reemplazar las palabras por gramática pura. Mm. How do you identify the tense, el tiempo gramatical? Do you give up? <laughs> Remember the auxiliary. Oh, okay, it's not gonna take just one letter on that color. Okay, so the auxiliary is what will tell you what grammar you're using, what tense, I'm sorry, what grammar, grammar tense you're using. In this caso, estás ocupando presente simple. Simple. Mm -hmm. uh, could you make it past? How would you make it a past statement? With was and where? Excellent. So mm -hmm. you can say apartments weren't big enough for families. Weren't big enough for families. Mm -hmm. But but now uh, they are. Right. Okay. Exactly. No, estamos hablando de evaluaciones siempre. Digamos que fuiste a visitar unos apartamentos y a tu regreso alguien te pregunta qué te parecieron los apartamentos. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, they weren't. I think they weren't big enough for families. Weren't big enough. Okay. Okay. Let's keep looking for another house instead. Okay. 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 We'll keep in practice. <laughs> yeah. And again, you have the same example later. Our apartments are too small for families, too small for pets. It's the same structure without not. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That's a positive statement. Then the two will be the quantifier and small the adjective. Okay. There you go. Okay. Now, comparisons with adjectives, and which is what you were asking me, right? Houses aren't as convenient as apartments. That is, okay, that could be an, a comparison of equity. Okay, oh. Okay, time's up. When you say as, and you say as, so um, then in that example, houses are as expensive as apartments. 
in Escalón. That would be a positive statement and is an equity comparison. Houses are as expensive as apartments in Escalón. Okay, and teacher is wrong if we say something like, uh, like, like the first example, we have their houses aren't as, as convenient as apartments. And it's wrong if we tell something like, houses are not so convenient as apartment. Perfect example, that's the same thing. Okay, mm -hmm. that's the same. Okay. As convenient as apartments. Yep, again, you're comparing two situations, two things okay yeah and that's the point don't have enough parking mm -hmm. spaces now we're using nows later apartments don't have enough parking spaces houses cost too much money okay i'm not using adjectives anymore i'm just saying comparing with the words apartments have just as many rooms as houses just as many rooms as houses as much, as many, as much. Okay. Check the video. And um, the point of this is for you to continue making a lot of exercises, a lot of examples. And it will help me a lot. Yeah, it's going to help mm -hmm. you a lot. Totally. Okay. Thanks, oh, you're welcome. Okay. How many are we? We are 12, 11, let's say. Okay. Any other question about any topic from this module? That's what we're doing right now. Questions? No questions? Let me do something really quick here. Okay, let me present the, um, the module, the whole course here and go scrolling little by little so you can Remember <laughs> what we did the whole month. And then we will cover the exam, okay? So at the beginning on section one, we talked about the past tense. Oh, okay. I think we talked about the verb to be in past. Who remembers what is the verb to be in past? Was and well. Was and where, very good. Now for actions, simple past statements with B is what Francisco just said, was and where. What about without using the verb to be? What do we use for simple past statements with actions? What is the auxiliary? Edwin, Carlos, Giovanni. Erika, Abigail, Juliana, Mercy, Abel, Stephanie. Uh huh. Uh, have. Have. Uh, hmm. When you say an action like cook, but in negative or question, what is the auxiliary that you use in the past, in the simple past? Okay, if I say I cooked a turkey yesterday, I cooked, cooked a turkey yesterday, what is the negative form? I remember, okay. Edwin, Carlos, Giovanni, Hermes, where is Richard? I don't see Richard here. He used to. Mm -mm, we haven't got there. Deed, guys, remember? Deed. Deed. Deed, teacher. For actions, we use did. Okay, was and where. Can you give me an example of a statement with was and where? Como nadie quiere hacer preguntas, le voy a empezar a hacer preguntas yo. Okay, a positive statement using was or where in simple past. Was she beautiful? And question? Uh, that's a question. Okay, uh -huh. was, she, was she beautiful? She was beautiful. She was really beautiful. Okay, 
No, a positive statement. I was at work yesterday. I was at work yesterday. I like that, yeah. Good, very good. Uh, a place, a place. I, was, I was born in El Salvador. I was born in El Salvador. Perfect. Easy, right? What about a negative statement? I was I, in, I was in uh, played soccer in the park in this day. I'm sorry, I wasn't. I wasn't. Mm -hmm. Played played in the playing soccer in the park in this day. Okay, that is past continuous. Okay, that was past continuous. If you use ing, that is past continuous. I was telling you I was dreaming, I was sleeping, ing, no. In simple past, simple past with the verb to be, you don't use another verb. You just say, for example, I was at work, I was okay, she was born in such a place. You were, I mean, yeah, you were 18. You were 18. ¿Se acuerdan del ejercicio que hicimos? Uh, guess the character. Guess the character. Were you white? Were you a famous person? Were you a singer? Okay. Don't forget that. Okay. For actions, we use did. Now, in positive statements, we don't use the auxiliary, right? So the verb goes on its base form. I'm sorry, the verb goes in the past form. So if I were to say, if I were to say, um, yo salté 100 metros ayer. Okay, yo salté 100 metros ayer. Anybody? I was jumping. Ok, ya no estoy con el verbo to be. Dije, sujeto, el verbo en pasado, complemento. Tres cosas nada más, Frank. Ok. I was jump. <ríe> Quítale el was. I. I jumping. Jumped. Jump. Ajá. Uh -huh. I jumped 100. Um. Sorry, ok, Frank. Again, I can barely hear you. I'm sorry. I jumped mm -hmm. 100 meters. Uh, 100. 100 meters. Yesterday sounds better. 100, 100 meters yesterday. I jumped 100 meters yesterday. Okay. In this simple past, you have a subject Okay, a verb in past and the complement. That's it. Okay. Okay. Jump. And the negative uh, sentences. Okay, negative sentences. Yeah, Giovanni. Um, I I didn't jump a hundred um, meters. Meters, uh-huh. Meters. Excellent. I didn't jump 100 meters yesterday. Excellent. And the question, you just bring the auxiliary to the beginning. You can say did. Oh. Did I? That's it. Good. That was a simple past for actions. People, do you want to make an open question? Why did I jump 100 meters yesterday? Oh, don't forget the question mark. Do you have any questions with this part? Alguna pregunta con esta parte del contenido de su módulo? Que estamos terminando hoy. Questions. Se podría hacer la pregunta con el verbo al inicio también, ¿verdad? En pasado. Mm -hmm. Como salté 100 metros ayer. Necesitaría siempre el auxiliar. 
De verdad. Sí, para hacer una pregunta siempre necesitas el auxiliar. Esa fue una de las primeras lecciones de vida que yo tuve con el inglés, les comentaba, ¿verdad? Las gringas me agarraban y me decían, did, do. Yo okay. no usaba los auxiliares para hacer las preguntas. Ok, okay. ya. Yeah. Gracias. You're welcome. Y eso es con toda regla gramatical. De hecho, bien, hay algo que ustedes deben de, de fijarse siempre, eso, eso que acaba de decir... Um, Stephanie, ¿sí? ¿No? Ok. Um, sí. Sí. <ríe> ok, es... Número uno, ¿cuál es el auxiliar? ¿Dónde está el auxiliar en esta oración? No tiene auxiliar. Ok, ¿cómo está el verbo? En el pasado. Eh, podría fijarme incluso en el adverbio de frecuencia que están ocupando. Si dice yesterday, the night before. Si dice in two years. Um, Since four years ago. Give me one second. Oh my God. Les cuento una historia. Llevamos una semana buscando un celular que los niños ocupaban y acaba de aparecer y es como y le hemos, dado le hemos dado vuelta a la casa por completo y hasta pensamos que alguien se lo había robado ah, anyways, ya pasó ok, repitiendo, entonces me fijo en cada detalle de la estructura que estoy eh, viendo ¿eh? número dos, entonces el auxiliar es crítico es muy importante y en cuanto al auxiliar, Stephanie y para todos, me tengo que fijar si ven el positivo o no por ejemplo de los tiempos gramaticales que ha visto hasta ahora, ¿cuál lleva el auxiliar en el positivo? En una afirmación. Uh -huh. Chicos, hello. Ok. Eh, uh -huh. <ríe> Acá tenés un ejemplo, por ejemplo. Valga la redundancia, ok. Yes, this tense. If you use the verb to be in past, it goes on positive, negative, and questions. Ok. It goes on positive, negatives, and questions. Siempre va a ir ahí el, el, el verbo to be en pasado. Ok. No les veo muy animados. Eh, serían, por favor, eh, me podrían decir qué onda. Los miro muy callados. Mm -hmm. Going on. Ok. Bien, ayer les dejaba una tarea. Eh, preguntas, esa es la idea de ahora, ¿no? Dudas con el contenido que hemos visto hasta ahora y vamos a ir abarcando una por una, pero nadie habla, no sé. Es que yo tengo una pregunta. Víctor, sí. Cuando, o sea, eh, ¿en qué momento usamos el verbo to be para hacer preguntas en vez de alfilar? Porque. Bueno, cuando decimos, ¿dónde naciste tú? Eh, usamos el verbo, el verbo vi, tu vi, en el pasado, haciendo la pregunta. Pero ¿en qué momento usamos el do, el did? Ok. ¿Por qué no digo, la pregunta de Victoria es por qué no digo, where did you born? ¿Verdad, Víctor? Ajá, ah, ajá. Ah. Sino, sino que usamos el, el, el verbo to be. Ok. Porque, ser, ¿será porque estoy hablando de algo que no fue una acción? Sino, o sea, acordémonos que to be es ser o estar. Uh, 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 ya, entonces, ¿dónde naciste tú? Don't, where were you born? Entonces, teacher, quiere decir que cuando ocupamos el do es cuando es una acción. Es una acción cabal. Where were you born? Exacto. Okay. Para situaciones, o sea, de, como eso, ¿no? Todo lo que no sea una acción, ocupamos el verbo to be. How old were you? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. ¿Cuántos años te, uh -huh. ¿Cuántos años? tenías? Tenía. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Eh, características físicas. 
¿O ¿Cuántos años tienes? ¿Cuántos años tienes actualmente, por ejemplo? Uh -huh. ¿Cuán alto eras en high school? Uh -huh. Lo mismo, ¿no? How tall were you in high school? ¿Ok? Ser o estar. Eso siempre causa como confusión un poco, pero mi consejo, contrastenlo con el español, el ser o el estar. ¿Ok? Es diferente, Víctor, a que te pregunte, ¿juegas básquetbol? Y sí, me equivoqué. Y me sigo equivocando. Siempre esa palabra me da cosa. Ok. ¿Juegas básquetbol? Que debería de ser juegas pelota canasta. ¿Cómo es? Baloncesto. Baloncesto. Ajá. ¿Juego baloncesto? Es una acción, ¿no? Ajá. Entonces ahí ocupa el do. Do you, do you play basketball? Uh -huh. Do you play basketball or did you play basketball? Uh -huh. Exacto. And that's an, is in the past. That is in the past, right? Jugabas basketball. Mm -hmm. That's right. Actions. Okay. Any other question? Teacher, I have a question with the topic about uh, using used to. Uh, because I haven't wrote a destructor for the question. So how I can make a question using used to is using the did. Uh, did, did you use dance last night or something like that? Could you explain me how I can make a question using yep. used to? Right now. So. Okay. Ese tema de hecho es bien sencillo y es bien útil. Lo ocupamos para hablar de eh, situaciones en el pasado que eran como rutinarias para nosotros. ¿Cómo se le llama eso? Hobbies. Hobbies. Eh, costumbres que teníamos antes, ¿no? Ok. So, let's go with the structure. Sigue siendo pasado. Es el equivalente a solía, ¿verdad? Uh -huh. Exacto. Solía. Uh -huh. Exacto. I used to play basketball in high school. El verbo está en pasado porque estoy hablando en pasado. Ok. Ok. The negative, voy a ocupar el auxiliar del pasado, lo mismo que acabo de hacer. I didn't uh -huh. used to, vuelve su forma base, play basketball in high school. Ahora, la estructura Marlon y todos siempre la voy a ocupar, la voy a adaptar, o la voy a, ajá, la voy a adquirir, la estructura, haciendo repeticiones, haciendo lo que yo estoy haciendo ahorita positivo, negativo, la pregunta, ¿cuál sería la pregunta? Did I used to play basketball in high school? Ok. Ahora yo quiero que mi cerebro se trague esto, ya no, ya no, ya no tengo que aprender, ok. Entonces voy a adaptar esto, como ya tengo aquí el auxiliar, al auxiliar siempre lo voy a poner de otro color, digo yo. Mi cerebro tiene que entender que eso está en azul. Ahí está. I used to play. Si tú desenfocas tu vista, lo que más va a ver tu cerebro son los colores. Ok. Ok. Quiero hacer una pregunta. Agrego el why antes del did. Why did I used to play basketball in high school? Or another way to create a negative sentences, sentence could be I never used to play basketball. That's another mm -hmm. way. Making, making the positive and negative statement using the adverb. Never. Okay. Yeah. Did Thanks you ever, 
could you say, did you ever, no, I, you know, did you ever used to play? Alguna vez solías jugar? No, no, no. Doesn't make did, sense. Did you use to watch Pokemon when you was kid? When you were? When you were, sorry. When you were a kid. Yeah, when you were a kid. Uh huh. No, oh, I, did, I didn't used to watch Pokemon. Well, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> yeah, the rocket team. That's what I remember. <laughs> okay. Uh huh. This is a great topic, actually. How was your name? How how was your neighbor when you were a kid? What things have changed? How mm -hmm. did your how did your neighborhood used to be? How did your neighborhood used to be when you were a kid? And Something like I used to play a lot at the street, but today is very dangerous. Right. Everything used mm. to be more quiet, you know, everything used to be uh, more adequated for kids, you know better for kids and so on okay hey, thanks teacher. you're welcome okay guys let's go with the next part of your model and then cover the um the exam okay this is too big I'm going to go back to the course and check the final exam. OK, so I don't know if you already went through this, through the final exam. No sé si ya todos vieron el examen final, si ya lo hicieron. Y de hecho, antes de continuar, quiero hacer eso. Alguien, por favor, levanten su mano si ya completaron todo y el examen final también. O más bien, saben que es más fácil, porque estoy seguro que a este punto ya casi todos lo hicieron, ¿no? Entonces, bajemos las manos. Bueno, los que están subiendo las manos es porque ya lo hicieron, ¿ok? Bien, 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 bien. Giovanni. También. Víctor. No, I'm not. Ya, yeah, ya lo hice, teacher. Víctor, muy bien. Giovanni, ¿no? Eh, Edwin. Ya iba a decir, Edwin se salió mejor. Ahí está, se me movió para otro lado. Ok, Erika. She said she did. Ok. Yeah, Excellent. Yeah. Abigail? Mercy? Did? Okay. Abel? Yes, teacher. Excellent. Stephanie? También. Easy, right? Maria Luisa? También, ya. Ya finished. Vieron que finish. se siente raro que se, ustedes me enciendan su cámara porque siento que me va a pasar como la del profesor en TikTok. Que viendo a los alumnos y uno de ellos dormido en sábana y se le encendió la cámara de repente. No puede ser. Ok. But don't worry. Ok. Let's cover that up to see if you still have any questions. Este día se supone que debemos de pasar por cada parte del examen y revisar cada detalle para ver qué pasó. So let's see. The first part is a listening quiz and what what was it about? What was the first audio about? Nobody, you don't remember? Just uh, the, the conversation. The first conversation is about uh, about tall James about uh, so uh, about her new apartment. What uh, why? Uh, she liked her, her new uh, apartment. New uh, apartment. apartment. Okay, why why does she like the new apartment? Jane likes her new apartment because. Uh, because uh, uh, the mansion that is a uh, a two bedroom. Uh, it has two bedrooms. Yes, the mansion in the conversation that the two bedroom. There's two more. It's, uh, yeah, but but it is a most most explicit. Uh, it's a but it's a very cheap, very cheaper. That's a. It's uh, cheaper than her old apartment. Old apartment, yes. Both. Okay, so it has two bedrooms and it's cheaper than the old apartment. Yes. Okay. Uh, Seth wants to live downtown because it's less expensive. He works there. 
there are more parking spaces. Uh, yeah, the, the, the set went to Lidon Town because he, he works there. He works there. Okay. Yeah. Do you agree, guys? Yes. Okay. I think this part was very simple, right? Now let's go with the vocabulary. Okay. Oh my God, it's multiple choice. Really? I didn't see this before. Nadie me estuvo preguntando nada de este examen, eh? lo cual me indica que estuvo fácil, supongo, y por ser de, de opción múltiple, pues estaba más fácil aún. I love my neighborhood. It's very dangerous. Mm -hmm. You're going to love your neighborhood. It's so <laughs> dangerous. <laughs> I know, give me the answer, it's safe, right? Safe. It's very safe, okay. You know what, I'll start saying names, okay. Uh, well, I live on a very busy street. I, it can get a little bit I live on a very busy street. It can get a little bit noisy, a little bit modern, a little bit spacious, Abel. Spacious. Spacious. Okay. I live in a very busy street. Very busy. There's a lot of cars, a lot of people, buses, noisy, right? Noisy. It gets it can get a little bit noisy. Okay. It's hmm, comfortable to have parking spaces near my apartment. It's convenient to have parking spaces. Where is a dinghy to have parking spaces in my apartment? What do you think? It's convenient. convenient. It's convenient. Okay. Our house is modern and very bright. It has Abigail, huge, cramped, private windows. Abigail. Hi, teacher. Excuse okay. me. Okay. <laughs> Don't worry. Number four. Our house is modern and very bright. It has huge windows or cramped windows, private windows. Is a private. Private windows. Hmm. Now, what is bright? Abigail? Uh, bright. This is bright. <laughs> you see? That's bright. Oh, brillante. Yes, it's, it's very bright. It's very lighted. You know, there's a lot of light, right? And that is because it has huge. Huge. Oh, huge. huge. Huge windows. Huge is like enormous, big, very okay. big, very big windows. Okay, I think those are the answers. I don't know. Teacher, question. Yes. yes. What mean cramped? Cramped, I think it's like jammed. Um, the windows that you cannot open. La ventana que no se pueden cerrar, abrir. Right, cramped windows. Teacher and I was translating the word mm -hmm. dinky and that thing says that is sucio, sucio, but in dinky. what, uh -huh, dinky, but in what term we can use it? This place is so dingy. This place is so filthy. Mm. Try to look for filthy. Like dirty. Dirty, filthy, yeah. Uh -huh. okay. um, yeah, dirty, filthy. Okay, uh, you can use thesaurus, thesaurus.com, T-H-E, saurus.com to find synonyms. Only we. Yep. And so, yes, all of your answers were right. Now the question, Marlon's question, let's practice Marlon. Not enough. Our apartment is too small. There are 
there are no space enough. <gasps> no, oh no, no rooms, no, not enough rooms. <laughs> no, no rooms. Actually, here you have the answer. Are enough. Use, not enough look at rooms. this, use not enough. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> it's the only one with not enough. I was looking for the word that we saw and the previous the, the, for for the Sorry. adjective you are looking for the adjective that's okay okay people can see into our house there is not privacy enough not enough privacy not enough space not enough privacy not enough not enough, not enough privacy not privacy. Enough privacy yeah they can see into our house <gasps> oh my god my car is too small. It doesn't have enough space. Enough space. Okay, it doesn't have enough space. Okay, teacher, pero ahí decía que hay que poner not, not antes de enough. Pero como lo lleva, yes, it doesn't. Yeah. Ooh, there you go. Very good. <laughs> Got it. That's it. Very good. Okay, let's go with as many or as much. Okay. I'm going to use as, as, or as many as, or as much as. And the words given. Okay, what's number one? My apartment doesn't have many windows. Many windows. Okay. This is so weird. Where is the ass? My apartment doesn't have many windows. My old one. Much window. It's missing. No, it's okay. How many but, windows has yeah, we all? No, but it's missing the uh don't worry. This is an error porque falta el as ahí. My apartment doesn't have as many windows as my old one. Yeah. It's comparing. Okay. Yeah. It's okay. Her house is as convenient as your as convenient apartment. as your apartment. Very good. Creo que aquí faltó un, un, una respuesta por eso. Okay. Una opción. Una opción, thank you. Modern apartments often don't have As much space as, as much, much space, space as. as older ones. Excellent. Very good, guys. Okay. In este caso, ya todos terminaron el, el, los exámenes según me expresaban. So I'm just going through the exercises, guys, to make sure you understood. I wish they will buy my car, for example. My parent won't buy me a car. I wish they will buy me a car. So we're using uh, wish, right? Remember? Wishes, how to express wishes. I don't I like say. my new job. Uh huh. I don't like my new job. I wish were more fun. It was or it were more fun. It were. It were. It were. Yeah. It were more fun. Exactly. Remember, we talked about this. We use were with singular subjects for figurative situations, right? How do you call them, Marlon? You said it. Figurative uh, suppositions, <coughs> unreal situations. Okay, next. I can find my new cell phone. I wish. I could find I it. I could find it. I could find it. Very good. I wish I could find it. My boyfriend isn't in good shape. I wish. <laughs> mm hmm. We were in good shape. We are in good shape. Let's see. Yeah, there you go. Easy. This is so simple. Now, just keep in mind that after the subject, you need the verb in past. Right? After wish, the next statement will be in past. It were, it was, she was, or etc. Right? The verb goes in past after wish. Okay. 
A simple. A simple, thank you. Okay, then we have simple past versus present perfect. What is this? Is this simple past or present perfect? Present perfect. Present perfect. Present perfect. Okay. Have you ever eaten? Eaten. 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 Eaten Spanish food. Have you ever eaten Spanish food? Yes, I have. I have. I went. I went. I went. I went. I went to a Spanish restaurant, restaurant last week. week. With. Very good. Me yeah, too. from present perfect, we answer in past. Did you like, like, it. like it? Like it? Like it? Like it? You like? It. Yes. Yes. It, it was, was delicious. Yes, it was delicious. It was delicious. Very good. Aquí ya no estamos con lo anterior. Ahora sí es, es pasado simple, right? Very good. Easy. Got it. Okay, then we have future. Let's talk about the future. With will and be going to. Todos sus exámenes es de selección múltiple. I just can't believe it. Okay. Pero es del pasado si tuvimos que completar. Really? El, el primero si teníamos que completar. Uh, uh, yes, in my, in my third exam is a, is a, is a two parties complete. Mm -hmm. en, en my third exam en, en el examen intermedio en una, oh, on the term de, de midterm on the midterm mid mid yes, the midterm test is true ok, so this is easy future este will... venían como dos para escuchar para ver que también teníamos Just one. el audio uh, sí, solo el primero de hecho no, no me había otro el de reading and comprehension ya vamos a llegar ahí mm. ya yeah. Okay, that's the last one. Okay, future with will and be going to. Question, when do we use will? Will is a, use a, with a probably. Probability. Probability. Probably. When you are not, when you are not sure about something, right? Will. Okay, if you know and you're sure, then you use going to okay so what after class today what are you going to do are you going to do excellent i'm definitely going to watch a movie with going my to watch a movie going to watch friend. excellent i'm definitely so here you have the verb to be then going to watch what? A movie. Very good. Okay. When are they, are they going, are they to, going take to take their vacation? Their vacation. Their vacation. Their vacation. Vacation. Their vacation. vacation. Very good. I think they will go. We'll go. We'll go, we'll go on, on a cruise, cruise. 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 in June, June or July. Oh, July. Repeat, cruise. 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 They will go on a cruise in June or July. Yay. In June or July. You got it. And last part. Let's go with the reading and comprehension. Okay. Wow. It's really long. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what? This will be a good exercise for you uh, to listen to this audio later. Hi, Paula. Greetings from Bangkok. Fernando and I are having a really good time. It's a great city for shopping. Yesterday, we went to a huge weekend market. It was full of really interesting things to buy especially close and the prices are great things here are not nearly as expensive as they are at home of course fernando tells me i'm spending too much money but you know him he never buys anything 
Have you ever eaten Thai food? Thai food? It's delicious. We just had a wonderful dinner in one of the restaurants on the river. Fernando ordered green curry and rice. And I had my favorite dish, me crab. Crispy noodles with shrimp, shrimp, and also, and chicken, I'm sorry. For dessert, we had fried bananas. Everything was so good. It was also fun to watch the boats pass by. One thing I've noticed is that restaurants make their curries less spicy for foreigners. Yesterday, I told our waiter, this curry isn't hot enough for us. He smiled and said, some foreigners don't like spicy food. They, then he brought us another curry that was much hotter. Time to stop. We're flying home tomorrow, so I'll see you soon, Rosa. Okay. Watch the video again. Practice pronunciation. Okay, so Van Gogh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, Van Gogh, Van Gogh. Is, a, is a good place for shopping. True. True? Mm, true. Yes. yes. Okay, go with the next one, Victor. You can buy most things except clothes in the market. It's a false. It's false. Yes. Okay, number three. Stephanie. Hi. The price in the market are very rational. Okay, repeat. Prices. Price. Prices. 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 Reasonable. Reasonable. There you go. El estrés está acá, mira. Reasonable. 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 Okay. Okay. Okay, and that's true. Okay. Uh, next one, Mercy. Nico is the name for green curry. False. For green curry. And that's false? Okay. Yes. And the last one, Edwin. All, all foreign visitor love Thailand hot and spi spicy food. Okay. It's false, right? Okay, repeat. All foreign. It's false. All, all foreign. All foreign. All foreign. Visitors. All foreign. Visitors. Visitors. There you go. Foreign visitors. 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 That's right. Visitors. And I guess you're right. Totally. Okay, guys. That was the exam. As simple as that. Okay. Bien. Eh, ¿Alguien tiene alguna pregunta, duda, inquietud? Sugerencia. Aún guardada ahí. Resentimiento. <risa> comentarios de odio hacia mi persona. No sé. Telen. Feel free. Aprovechen acá los sentimientos, vea. Sí, cabal. <risa> Bien, nos quedan tres minutos. Preguntas con la plataforma, el programa, su teacher, eh, uh, mm, comentarios. Rebeca no estuvo con nosotros de nuevo, me parece, ¿no? Ok. Ok, teacher, or do class is. Um, very interesting. Interesting. Uh, I don't. Um, I don't. Uh, Bueno, no soy sincero, dice, a mí me cuesta un poco e interpretar, pero trato de, de entender ¿verdad? poco a poco. Y, 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 y sí, este, bastante interesante todo el de yo Plaza. Así mm -hmm. que, You're thank welcome. you for your class. No hay y, de qué. A ver, eh, Carlos, me alegra, gracias por comentar, Carlos, y a todos, la verdad, yo sé que ay, el problema principal que tenemos todos al aprender algo es que 
nos falta autoestima, chicos. Eh, y se lo digo por experiencia. En mi caso, eh, desde que empecé a dar clases en el 2014, yo siempre he sido muy jovial, o sea, desde pequeño y meque a veces. Era, era muy meque cuando estaba pequeño. Me daba curiosidad y no me quedaba con la pregunta en la cabeza, sino que preguntaban que me regañaran. ¿verdad? Varias veces me dijeron, si pote, qué metido sos, ¿verdad? Pero era mejor que quedarme con la curiosidad. Así se lo digo, le doy gracias a Dios porque fui metido cuando tenía que hacerlo. Miraba que alguien estaba cambiando un foco o un toma en la casa y me fijaba cómo se hacía. Entonces, hasta eso me enseñó la vida. ¿Por qué les menciono esto? Porque, pues, me ocurrió esto, ¿no? Empecé a dar clases y no confiaba, no me soltaba. Hasta que llegó mi primera evaluación de Insaforp y... y la persona que llegó no hablaba inglés. Llegó a evaluar mi manera de dar la clase. Pero esta señora me dejó traumado porque me dijo, me dijo algo, imagínate cómo tomo yo las cosas. Me dijo, puchica, no he visto a ningún profesor que, que dé las clases como ustedes, que ustedes excelente, que no sé qué yo. Desde pequeño me acordé lo que tanto me repetía a mí mismo. Eh, mi, mi abuela, que en paz descanse, me decía, nadie es perfecto. Nadie es perfecto, solo Dios. Yo me metí eso en la cabeza y empecé a darle vueltas y dije, pero podría buscar la perfección. Y entonces a mi abuela no le gustaba eso. Y yo decía, pero si su hijo la, la idea esta, ¿no? Total que me hice una frase, dije, eh, la perfección entonces es una ilusión que vale la pena perseguir tomando en cuenta que jamás la vas a alcanzar para evitarte la frustración. Otra vez, la perfección es una ilusión que vale la pena perseguir, tomando en cuenta que es una ilusión, para evitar la frustración que te va a causar. Pero lo positivo de este mensaje es que hagas lo que hagas, sea lo que sea, por pequeño que hagas, vas a tratar de hacerlo lo mejor que puedas. ¿Sí o no? Entonces, al final, sin quererlo, vas a estar dando lo mejor de vos. Y si no conseguiste lo que querías, pues por lo menos lo intentaste. Entonces, metámonos eso en la cabeza y quitémonos eso de yo no... Una cosa muy común en todo ser humano es decir, me cuesta, se me hace difícil, no puedo. <ríe> y ya los dejo con eso. En, en tercer ciclo tenía un entrenador, le decíamos el toro, porque era igualito el, al emblema de los Bulls de Chicago. ¿Sí? Así exactamente, le faltaba el pelo acá, tenía, era bravo y tenía como cuatro líneas aquí, moreno, chaparro y todo así. Y me decía, Rodríguez, toca el aro, me decía y yo, no puedo. Y me gritaba cada vez que le decía no puedo, decir no puedo es tener pobreza mental, Rodríguez, me decía, yo, Poya, man. me enojaba yo cuando me decía eso, después entendí, un día me enojé tanto que toqué el aro terminé agarrando el aro, estaba molesto que estaba, entonces cuando más sintas eso, esa rabia de que decís, no me sale esto, no me entra esta gramática no me sale, ¿sabes qué? empezá a decir lo contrario yo puedo, yo puedo, yo puedo aquí, aquí, y le vas a hallar agarrar con ira, esa ira, enfocala en lo positivo, y decir yo puedo y vas a ver, te va a funcionar ok Good. No sé si lo veré el lunes, eh, si empezamos el lunes, no lo sé, les van a comunicar solo la misión de esta noche, si no lo han hecho aún, es terminar la plataforma, ¿ok? Teacher, Espero. one question, one question. Yes, Edwin. Eh, will you, we will take the other model? Will we take the, the other model with you? Mm, no lo sé, no lo sé, a mí probablemente me, me informen el sábado, Edwin, si voy a estar con ustedes o no. O es más, me voy a dar cuenta hasta el lunes si empezamos el lunes, o si hasta el lunes de la otra semana, no sé cómo van a gestionar el inicio de la clase, pero muy seguramente les van a estar notificando por su correo, ya sea okay. mañana, viernes, si terminan hoy la plataforma. ¿Verdad? Es un proceso de inscripción de nuevo para un nuevo módulo. ¿Ok? Ok. Yo, okay. Pero, que, pero sí espero, espero estar con ustedes primero yo, ¿verdad? A ver cómo nos va, ¿ok? Thank you. Gracias, Gracias teacher. Nice to meet you. You're welcome. Nice to meet you. Good night, guys. Gracias, teacher. Bye bye. Bye bye.